Alright, let's do some color grading. We did just my pocket 3 footage using the hand serum inside the Vinci Resolve. However, before I start, I want to mention a couple of very important things. First of all, the Hanser sent me a free pro license a while back to test and review, and my review is positive. Second, if you're not going to properly expose and white balance your shots in camera, you're not going to get good results in post-production, no matter what plugins you're going to use. So I would recommend to watch my DJI Osmo Pocket 3 settings video before this video. I'm going to leave a link for it up here. And finally, I also use the Freewell ND filters and anamorphic lens for the clips in the beginning of this video to make the footage a bit more cinematic i'm also going to leave links for this down below with a video i made about the filters as well anyhow let's start color grading all right let's start with this clip in here i already have here a basic node 3 but nothing is yet applied we're going to do everything together all the nodes are pretty much empty all right so first of all i have here a cst in and then a cst out i'm going from rec 709 to davinci watt gamut intermediate the reason i'm using rec 709 is because d log m is not a true log format it's basically a normal rec 709 format but with less contrast and less saturation and for the cst out i'm going from davinci watt gamut intermediate back to rec 709 but this time rec 709 type a because i'm using a mac computer all right first of all we have here the exposure and contrast node and because i pretty much nailed the exposure in this shot i don't have to do anything when it comes to exposure but i do need to bring some contrast back so let's do that i'm gonna go for my color wheels slightly reduce the lift or the shadows slightly increase the gain or the highlights and slightly reduce the gamma or the mid-tones this is the before and after before and after next i have the balance node where i adjust the white balance and again because i properly set the white balance in camera i don't really have to do much to fix the white balance i do see some magenta red from the nd filters and a bit of yellow so let's fix that i'm gonna go to my offset wheel slightly reduce the red so about here i would say and also go to my temperature slider and slightly push it towards blue so about here this is the before and after before and after before and after a very minor difference but it makes the shot a bit more neutral basically all right the next node is the saturation node and since the vinci resolve 19 beta i've been using the color slice saturation because it adds saturation without affecting the contrast and exposure so let me add some saturation i'm gonna go to about here i would say before and after before and after next we have the shadows node where i basically clean up the shadows if needed in here i can definitely see some magenta and red in the shadows just a little bit it's barely noticeable but i can definitely see it so let's fix that i'm gonna go to my curves open the luma versus saturation curve add a point at the darkest parts of the frame and reduce the saturation in the shadows as you can see it makes a big difference let me go to about here i would say and this is the before and after before and after before and after all right next we have this green node where i basically adjust the green colors in this shot i'm gonna go to my curves again go to my hue versus hue slightly warm up the yellows and the greens by adding two points in here pushing it towards warmer colors to about here and here. I'm also going to go to my hue versus saturation, add the same points, and I'm going to desaturate these colors just slightly. I'm also going to desaturate the orange colors of the trees and the building just to make it a bit more neutral. So I'm push it down in here to make everything more cohesive, basically. And also, I'm going to go to my hue versus luminance, add the same points for the yellow and green, and slightly reduce the luminance of these colors. Not too much because this can easily break apart the footage. Be careful with this slider adjustment. I'm gonna set it to about here, I would say. And I think I'm done. This is the before and after, before and after. It just looks a bit more balanced, if you will. All right, next is my power window adjustment. And here I'm just going to add one power window around the main subject of this shot, which is this structure in here. And I'm going to add a mask around this structure with a pen tool. Let me zoom out, select the points in here. I'm going to fix here everything just to make everything more tidy. Then I'm going to go to my outside, set it to 1 just to fade out the adjustment a bit. Same thing goes for the softness. I'm going to set it to about 12. And I'm going to do some tracking as well because we have movement in the shot. So I'm going to go here all the way to the end. 
and start tracking. DaVinci Resolve is going to do its magic. Now I'm going to come back to my Windows node, invert the mask because I want to adjust everything outside of the mask. And I'm going to decrease the exposure with the HDR wheels just to make the structure pop a bit more from the rest of the frame. To somewhere about here, let me turn this off. And this is the before and after, before and after. As you can see, with the adjustment, the structure, the building pops out a bit more from the rest of the frame, whereas before everything looks like the same. It has the same exposure pretty much. Okay, next I'm going to use this lift node to lift the shadows and compress the highlights. I love doing this to all of my shots pretty much because it makes the transition between shadows and highlights a bit more gradual and smooth. So let me open the curves for that. Select only the Y, which stands for the luminance, and then enable editable splines just to make the contrast transition a bit smoother and I'm going to elevate the shadows I usually aim to go to about 2 with the shadows on the waveform I have here a reference point on the low end set to 2 I basically make sure my shadows are around 2 on this point let's also compress the highlights a bit add back the contrast and I think I am done. This is the before and after, before and after. As you can see, if I'm going to zoom in in here and do a before and after, before and after, you can definitely see more details in the shadows. And if I'm going to go in here as well, you can see the same thing before and after, before and after, especially in this corner in here, before and after, before and after. It just makes the shot look a bit more neutral in terms of exposure. Nothing is really blown out and the shadows are not completely dark. It looks a bit more cinematic, if you will. All right, finally, I have here the Dehancer node, and I've set it after the CST out node because Dehancer is meant to be used in the Rex 9 color space, unless you go in here and change some stuff around, but I don't. Now, what is Dehancer? Dehancer is a film emulation plugin that's designed to emulate specific film stocks and film prints with effects such as grain, film grain, bloom, halation, and other film effects. It is not free. It costs $450 for the pro version, which is expensive, but it's worth the price, in my opinion. Opinion. You also have the light version which costs $200 and if you're going to use the code ROMA10 at checkout on all the Hunters products you're going to receive 10% off. I'm going to leave links for everything down below. Now if you don't want to use the Hunter and you have the DaVinci Resolve Studio and you are in the beta you can use the film look creator which does pretty much the same thing as the Hunter. It makes the footage look more like film but it's not as precise as the Hunter. The Hunter actually emulates specific film stocks and film prints whereas film look creator is more like a couple of sliders and you adjust them and see what looks the best but it's built into DaVinci Resolve and if you don't have the funds for the Hunter yet I would recommend using that instead. Anyway let's go to the Hunter first delete this or right, the first thing I'm going to do is add a specific film stock and I'm going to use one of my favorites which is Kodak Hector 100 I love this one and here you can push it towards you know blue or warmer colors and also it changes Changes the contrast of the shot and I'm gonna go for like a blue cold look basically with this shot I think. Here I have film developer I'm not going to touch that. Film compression I'm going to enable it's basically going to compress the highlights. I'm going to zoom in in here to the highlights you'll be able to see it before and after before and after just look in here before and after before and after I'm just going to leave it at default settings. Next here I am going to slightly increase the black point just to add back some contrast just like so. And here I'm going to select my film print, which is the Kodak 2383 print film. And let me enable this first, actually. I'm also going to add a bit more contrast, just slightly, and play around with this target white, which basically changes the white balance of the shot. And I'm going to go for like a blue look, like I said. Then here we have the color head, which basically allows you to play around with the colors of the shadows, mid-tones, and highlights. So let me enable this and play around with this until I'm happy. I'm not going to touch the shadows. I'm going to warm up slightly the mid-tones to about, let's see, like 12. And I'm going to also warm up the highlights. Let me zoom in in here. If you look at the highlights, you can see it changes the colors. I'm gonna go to about seven on the highlights. Next is film grain. I'm just going to select a preset. You have presets in here or you can select costume and adjust everything as you want but just to make it easier I'm going to use presets. Let's go for 65 millimeters which is the one that has the least amount of grain. Enable this. See what I am doing. 
before and after before and after as you can see here especially it adds a lot of grain want to decrease it to about six this is before and after before and after i'm probably not going to play around with halation with this shot i don't really like halation so i'm just going to leave it turned off but i am going to add some bloom because i add i like bloom i'm also going to select a preset for that let's go for 65 millimeters zoom out maybe go to this woman in here see what i can do so as you can see it makes the highlights basically softer and more bloomy i'm gonna go to about here like 20 let's say so this is the before and after before and after barely noticeable but if you zoom in you can definitely see the difference anyhow i'm going to disable this 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 and this and also the vignette and finally i'm gonna go to my output and play around with the overall impact of the effect on my footage so this is how it looks without the effect this is with the effect as you can see it makes a huge difference to the overall look of the shot i'm gonna put it to about 65 i would say a good balance and this is the before and after before and after let's go a bit lower like 58 let's zoom in in here see how it looks before and after before and after i'm quite happy with this Okay, let's do the next shot in here of my girlfriend walking up this trail i love this shot because it has a nice amount of contrast between highlights and shadows i love this kind of shots it just creates depth and it makes everything look more interesting in my opinion so let's start first of all with the exposure i'm slightly going to increase the exposure in here because the shadows are a bit too dark so i'm gonna go to my hdr wheels just bring up the exposure to about 0.5 with the balance again i nailed the white balance in here pretty much but i can still Still see some red from the ND filter so let me reduce that by going to the color wheels and reducing the red to about here and I think I'm done before and after before and after then saturation again I'm going to go to the color slice add some saturation back about here I'm going to clean up the shadows with the same method adding a point in here decreasing the saturation in the shadows just slightly not too much i'm also going to do the same thing with the greens in here because i want them to be slightly desaturated and warmer so let's go to the hue versus hue warm up everything not too much just a little bit desaturate them a little bit as well and i think that's it this is the before and after before and after a very minor difference but it goes a long way in the end now for the power window here i'm going to add a window around this light in here and basically decrease the exposure just to make everything look a bit more balanced this one is going to be a bit easier than the last one so let me go here to the beginning add like a circular window in here fade it out just to make the transition between the mask and the rest of the frame a bit smoother go to my color wheels take the gamma push it down and because i do have a movement in the shot i am going to track this so let me start in here go to the tracking start tracking the vinci resolve is going to do its magic now i'm going to disable this so you can see clearly what it does again before and after before and after as you can see now the shot looks a bit more balanced everything is pretty much you know makes more sense in terms of like lighting and stuff all right and finally here i'm going to use the lift node to compress the highlights even further and also increase the luminance of the shadows just to make the transition between the darkest parts of the shot to the brightest parts of the shot a bit more gradual let's go to the curves again Make sure I am on the Y, enable editable splines in here, slightly elevate the shadows, not too much, slightly compress the highlights, bring back some contrast. This is the before and after, before and after, as you can see, now you can see a bit more details around here. All right, finally, let's do the dehancer. I'm going to go through it quickly. Let's select supra 100 here and this time i'm gonna go for a very warm look basically enable my print film warm the image up just like so enable this increase the black point just to add some contrast back add some contrast in here as well not too much 
something like this let's compress the highlights as well just look what it makes in here a huge difference this is the before and after before and after next i'm gonna enable this color head play around with the tones in the shadows slightly make them more blue and cold i'm going to warm up the mid-tones about here and also warm up the highlights it's about here and i think i'm happy with this before and after before and after actually i'm going to decrease the shadows a bit about here and i'm also going to enable here film grain select 65 millimeters set it to about five i'm also not going to use halation in here but i am going to use bloom set it to like 65 see what i like the most which is somewhere around here let's see before and after before and after before and after and finally i'm going to go to my output play around with this I'm gonna set it to about here i would say Let's go 65 and I think I am done. As you can see, it's very quick and easy. And this is the final result before and after, before and after. All right, now let's do this final clip in here. First thing I'm going to do is add some contrast. Let's go to the color wheels, slightly reduce the lift, the gamma and increase the gain i definitely overexposed this shot as you can see in here it is blown out but i had to do it just to preserve the information in the shadows in here because the subject is in the shadows not in the highlights basically as for white balance i am pretty much well white balanced again because i use the nd filters i'm going to remove the red just slightly here it looks good before and after before and after i'm also going to add some saturation with the color slice to about here now because i shot this with the anamorphic lens from freewell if i go in here and zoom in you'll be able to see that it created some chromatic aberrations especially in the corner we've seen this purple fringing in here but it's very easy to fix i'm just gonna go to my chromatic node in here select the curves go to hue as a saturation select the blue and also the purple and basically desaturate everything and this is the before and after before and after as you can see if i zoom in it makes a significant difference this is the before and after before and after and it doesn't really affect the rest of the frame because the rest of the frame is not using these colors okay next i'm going to do the same thing with the shadows i'm going to clean up my shadows by going to the luma versus saturation selecting the darkest points and I'm basically desaturating the shadows in here halfway through you'll be able to see the difference in here before and after before and after a very minor difference honestly now for the windows i have here two windows one i'm going to put on this dragon and then the other one i'm going to put in here just to remove this haze above because the light was coming from above and it created this nasty haze which i don't really like so first of all let's create the window around the haze i'm going to go here select the circular window push it like this zoom out a little bit fade it out put it about here go to my primaries and reduce the gain to about here that's it now the shot looks more balanced before it was like this too bright on this side too dark on this side whereas now it is more balanced actually maybe i can add an outside node and try to brighten up the shadows on the other side a bit just like so it looks much better before as you can see this part was very bright this part was very dark whereas now everything looks a bit more balanced and for the second node for the second window i'm going to add a costume window around this dragon in here i'm going to increase the fade and probably i'm going to enable tracking let's try it and I'm going to add some contrast to the dragon because it's a bit faded and hazy for me. So let's do that. Add contrast in here. I'm also going to add some detail in the mid-tones to make it a bit sharper. And maybe I'm going to add an outside node and darken everything on the outside with the HDR wheels. Just like so. This is the before and after, before and after. I'm going to come back to my contrast node and add some additional contrast. Actually, let me add another node. Go to my curves. And I'm going to select the curves. Enable everything because I want to add contrast to the whole shot. Add a point in here. 
brighten up everything in here and darken up everything in here something like this before and after before and after all right as for the lift node i'm not going to play around with that because my shadows are elevated in here as you can see they are above the two reference points i'm going to delete this but i am going to enable the answer let's select a uh, film stock let's go with this one go for like a warm look enable the film compression to compress the highlights maybe play around with the tonal range here this is the before and after before and after actually it's a bit too much and the shot is kind of dark let me brighten it up a little bit by adding another node and i'm gonna go to my hdr wheels just brighten up everything slightly go back to the answer and i'm going to enable my print film warm everything up add some contrast not too much go to my color head enable it cool down the shadows a bit warm up the mitons and warm up the highlights enable film grain same as before 65 millimeters let's go like five let's try halation here set it to like 10 and also the bloom set it to 65 millimeters set it here to 10 and also let's play around with the film stock again yeah something like this actually it is a bit too dark let me go back to my hdr wheels in here i'm going to increase the exposure a bit to about here go back to the answer and i'm going to lower the output about here let's do like 65 just to be safe and this is the before the answer after the answer before the answer and then after the answer All right, so the results speak for themselves. As you can see, the Hanser makes color grading much easier and quicker. I've been using it for the last eight months, I think, and I can only say positive things about it. It's definitely very easy to use and very quick to use, and it delivers fantastic results. If you're interested to purchase the Hanser, make sure to check the links down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon.